The coronavirus has hit the Holy Land particularly hard. The dwindling Christian population in the land of Christ's birth is faced with economic collapse and also a lack of tourism and pilgrimage, not to mention the interruption of their daily lives of worship and the sacraments. My next guest is president of the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land. He joins us by phone to discuss the perilous situation there. Father Peter Vasco, thank you for joining us. It's, it's a pleasure talking with you, Raymond. The, Father, tell me, what is this pandemic doing in the daily lives of the friars, and how is it changing the lives of the people there in the Holy Land, particularly that, that fledgling Christian community? Well, I can say that, for, not first off, the 20, there are only 24 cases of Christians uh, who have the, the, have the, the, the uh, virus. Israel has over 9,000 cases. And, of course, what it has done is those, uh, those Christians, especially in Bethlehem, where it began the first week in March, they have all been sequestered and locked down since that time. And uh, with, it's really affecting them in different ways. What we're trying to do with, the, with, the, with our people is that uh, starting three weeks ago, we started in our parishes of Bethlehem and Jerusalem to deliver food to those who are not able to go out or who are sick or the elderly. And we placed these boxes of food uh, uh, through the volunteers of our Boy Scouts who deposited the boxes at the front door. And this has saved so many people's lives and appreciation of our, of our parishioners. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's something that is, is well needed. I think the Christians have a, 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 a sensitivity and a, and a patience for these different things that they have to do in order to uh, to work their live their lives out in quiet and 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 in, in fear sometimes, but at least we're we're having we're having we're we're getting involved with them on Palm on Palm Sunday although they can't go out all of our uh, priests have delivered uh, palm trees for example on this past Saturday uh, so and left them on their doorstep. Uh, people are thanking us that uh, they're having at least mass every day being televised by internet from our church of uh, St. Joseph's in Nazareth, and every day mass is being is being said, and they're they're so thankful that at least they they have this this presence of our Lord, etc. But it's difficult for them not having mass, not able able to go through the uh, to go to go to the confession to receive the sacraments. Father, the Church of the Holy Sepulcher is now closed, and there is some discussion with authorities about reopening it for Easter services without a congregation. This is really the centerpiece of the Easter season, not only in the Holy Land, but around the world. Where do things stand now? Uh, I don't know what the decision is going to be, but at present, it doesn't look very good. Uh, it would only, you can only have 10 people uh, in the church, and uh, obviously, uh, it looks like they w it will be closed to the public, and they'll just have uh, 10 priests uh, doing the ceremony, uh, the respective ceremonies on Good Friday, uh, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, it's sad that it's going to be that way, but they're still going to have a talk, as I said earlier, uh, to discuss that possibility. But at this point, I don't know what the results are going to be, but I don't think it's mm -hmm. going to be very positive. Yeah. Prime Minister Netanyahu has announced a nationwide lockdown until Good Friday, restricting all travel between cities until 7 a.m. on Friday. He's even mandating that Passover this year that the Seder be celebrated only with immediate family members to prevent the spread of the virus. Was that a wise move? Um, and, and in what way is this disrupting the observation of the Triduum for Christians? Well, you know, I think it's it's something that he's trying to be very practical about. Uh, it's, it's 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 very interesting because in the uh, ultra orthodox community, they have the highest number of uh, of coronavirus cases than the regular Israeli populace, and uh, he wants to protect basically people going for the Passover of uh, the Jewish people. And that's why that very strict curfew uh, was uh, was uh, enforced, is being enforced, will be enforced. And so it's. I think it's something you know, considering all the the problems. I think it's it's for the safety of the people. It's not the greatest thing that yeah. should happen to them, nor to our people, our Christians for Easter yeah. Sunday. 
But the reality is this this virus can spread very easily. And I think it's uh, one of these very unique situations that, that have come upon us, and they're trying to react accordingly. Uh, mm-hmm. At least the Christians, can, the Catholics can watch, tele- can watch the, the uh, ceremonies, religious ser- services on the television and on the Internet. So although they're not there, which would be the ideal situation, are, are faithful, at least they're, they're there uh, spiritually uh, with, the, with, with the other people, uh, the priests and ministers who are doing those uh, special services on Holy mm-hmm. Week. Father, before I let you go, what is your message to those watching, to those listening at this sacred time of year? Do you see a silver lining in this adversity? You know, some people are asking why this is happening. Some say God is punishing mankind for their the great evils that we continue to do. Others are saying it's God's way of getting our attention back to him. But you know, Raymond, in either case, it will always be our deep faith in God that I think will pull us through these dark times. That is why we should use this time to pray more, say the rosary, read sacred scripture, and be strengthened by following the Mass on television. You know, faith and hope are the gifts he gives to us, not fear and anxiety. And lastly, I would say to, to our faithful, to, our, to your, your, your viewers, be positive. Before there is, oh, because there's always light at the end of a dark tunnel. So I think we have to trust in his love for us. Well, I thank you. I thank you for joining us. Happy Easter. Uh, and of course, Father's work at the Franciscan Foundation for the Holy Land. You can follow them at FFHL.org. Father, happy Easter. Thank you. Happy Easter, Raymond. God bless.